I'm back with this 2021 Tesla Model 3, and today I'm investigating a rattling sound when I go over bumps. Here's what it sounds like. Now you probably know already from the title of this video that the sound is coming from these loose aero covers. So I'm going to take these off and figure out how they attach to the wheel and see if we can tighten it up a bit. Ah, Come on, dude. Gosh. So not only did this aero cover come off really hard, but we can see that all of the tabs on the inside of this thing are completely broken off. On my entire set, I've only got one tab remaining out of the 16 on my aero covers. These are meant to keep the cover centered on the wheel so that it doesn't slide around. Now you absolutely can just take the aero covers off and leave them off and the sound would go away. But the aero covers save something like 4% of the range of the car, which the way I drive adds up to like 50 bucks a year and savings just by having these aero covers on. And so I'd like to leave them on. Now the easiest solution to this is to just buy new aero covers. Tesla makes these available at a really reasonable price. They're only about $25 right through the app. So you can get a full set of four with free shipping for a hundred bucks plus tax. Now the problem with buying a new set is that this set only lasted me like a year or two before they started to break and I don't really like the idea of just lining the landfills with these things. Now you might think that I'm exaggerating, but I have these off at least twice a year to swap out my summer and winter tires. And even if you live in a warmer climate, you're supposed to be rotating your tires every 6,000 miles anyway. So that's twice a year for most people. So I wanted to come up with a way to fix these and reinforce them so they're a little bit stronger rather than just throwing these out and replacing them with new ones. So I have two aero covers here. This is the one that came off my car. You can see the centers are broken off. But on this one, this is an older style of aero cover. But you can see this is what the center is supposed to look like when it's intact. Now the plastic on these is pretty thin and it flexes quite a bit, which is why they needed to add this metal spring on the inside to keep those pushed out. So this is what we're trying to aim for with our fix. And so what I ended up doing was designing and 3D printing these little repair kits. I made the tabs on these considerably thicker than the original design, which means I have no need for that metal spring on the inside. And this whole thing can just slide in something like this. Now, in order to keep this attached to the wheel, I've made a hole here in the center and I have a nylock nut here to hold this in place. But what that means is that we need to actually drill a hole in this first. And unfortunately, we have Tesla's logo here. So I wanna see if I can remove this first so that we can hide the hole in the screw behind this. So I just have one of these little plastic pry bars. I think this actually came with a cabin air filter kit at one point, but you could buy them separately. And what I'm gonna to try to do is just get behind this logo here and, and see if we can pop it up. This is just held on with some silicone and so we should just be able to pry it up very slowly and see if we can just get it loose. All right, we have managed to get this off. You can see that it is a little bit deformed. This is just made out of aluminum. So we can just try to kind of bend it back and get it close because we're going to want to try to silicone this back on once we're all done. I want to do our best to see if we can get out all of this silicone because we don't want our screw head resting against something soft. We want it to rest against something hard so that it stays in place. And so just use a screwdriver or this, whatever you can to try to clean up some of this. You have to just get a little bit creative here. Use whatever tools you have. To assemble these, you can just take one of the stainless steel nuts and kind of get it started in these slots. We can go ahead and just kind of push that in with a screwdriver. And then you can take each tab, put one of the bolts through here, and then we can just screw it in. Something like that. And then we can just do this all the way around. 
And by the way, this electric screwdriver that I'm using is such a pleasure to use that I had to talk about it. You just hold down this trigger on the back here. And then if you turn the screwdriver to the right, it turns to the right. If you turn it to the left, it turns to the left. So it's got like this gyroscopic technology in it. And it's just so intuitive to use. I can start and finish screws by hand. It's really awesome for delicate work. And so if you're a tool guy, you gotta have the latest stuff. I'll put a link in the description to where to get these. They're just, just really awesome to work with. If you have any tabs that are remaining, just go ahead and put them out of their misery and put it behind you. Now the little grooves on the side of these are meant to lock into these pieces here. And so this whole thing can just slide on something like that. And then I just have a punch here. Mine's automatic. You can use a screw or a nail or whatever you want. All we want to do is mark this center hole in the plastic. So that we can drill a hole right through here. That's the size of the M3 screw that's going to go through here. I don't have any metric bits, but this is just an eighth inch bit. That's close enough for me. I'm going to take a sharp knife and just clean off the excess plastic that's in here. And now I can take one of the bolts and the fender washer. And I'm just going to put that in here. And now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to drop our 3D printed fitting on top of here. Something like that. And then I can take our nylock nut and I'm going to put that on here. Now, if you have silicone or construction adhesive or even just hot glue, you can just glue this down. That would simplify installation quite a bit. But I just wanted to use metal hardware just for a peace of mind. But it's up to you. Use whatever you want. Now, one of the nice things about this system is that if one of these tabs ever does break off, we can just remove it. And now we can screw in a new one and replace it. And next, we just want to glue on this cap. So make sure that there's nothing left on the back of this. And then we can just take some clear silicone. This is the same stuff that Tesla used. We're just going to squirt some on here and glue this back on. And one little nitpicky detail. If you want this to match Tesla's original design, then this little arrow in their logo should point towards the valve stem. That's how they have designed all of theirs. So when you glue yours on, make sure that yours points towards the valve stem. And now we can let these cure for 24 hours. You probably remember me struggling in the first part of this video. Well, watch how much easier the old style of aero cover comes off. You can see on this one, I've actually cracked the outside of it because this was gripping so hard onto the wheel that it split the plastic right there. And it's because the difference of this little metal tab. You can see this one is on top. This one is not. You can see it's actually got sandwiched behind there such that it's next to impossible for this to flex over there. So what I'm going to do is just take a screwdriver. I'm going to see if I can just kind of get that back where it belongs. I bend it out a little bit make room for this to come up and now this can flex again the way it's supposed to so whenever you have your aero covers off just be sure to take a look at the tops of all these to make sure this didn't get sandwiched down inside of there i have this snow tire that i'm going to try putting my aero cover on and now on the inside we can see how my 3d printed attachment attaches to the inside of the wheel however even with that staying centered we can see these clips over here that are all pretty loose and still pretty noisy. Listen to this. They can still rotate a little bit because it seems like these springs have just kind of given up. And let's compare the sound between this new style of cover and the old style. Here's the new style. And here's the old style. Now what I want to try is bending these springs back so I can see if I can get a little bit more life out of them. So I'm going to remove these springs and the only way that I figured out how to do this is to just stick a screwdriver in here 
get that top part out, and then you can just kind of twist it out here and pull it out. You do end up breaking a little tab right here, so I don't know if you put these back in if they will stay the way that they were originally meant to, but I'm gonna show you a before and after and see if I can convince you that taking these things out is worth it. If you want, you can try bending the spring back while it's still inside the plastic, but you do risk the chance of breaking off the plastic. So it's up to you. If you feel like taking a risk, then feel free. You could save some time, but I like the idea of just removing these. So now that I've got the springs out, the easiest way that I found to bend these back is to just put them in a little vise here. I'm just going to set them in here, something like this. And then I've got a pair of pliers. I'm just going to bend it out a little bit so that these are springing out a little further. Now, if you don't have a vise, you're welcome to try it with any tools that you have. If you just take a second pair of pliers, for example, you can bend them out this way. Whatever tools you have to just spread these out a little bit more so that they push out on the tabs of the arrow cover a little bit further. Now that I've bent back a bunch of these springs, I can just pop them back in. So just kind of drop them in like this and they just snap back in. So now that I've got the springs bent back out, let's try it again. Much, much better. So now that we've tightened up the springs, it's considerably harder to pull this cover off. But one tip that I've learned is that if you stick your hands through here, you can actually squeeze those springs together to release the arrow cover. It makes taking these off way easier. So now let's go for a drive and see how much progress we've made. Now to be thorough, I also wanted to talk about the aero cover that goes on Model Y Gemini wheels. And also the new 2024 Model 3 has a different style of aero cover. The Model Y hubcap has the same aluminum center that you can just unglue and it pulls out just like before. But on the inside, we see that the style is a little bit different. Instead of just four tabs, like on the Model 3, there's five here. And if we remove this spring from the inside, we can see that these tabs are actually pretty resilient. I've actually tried to break these off, and it seems like these are quite a bit stronger than what came on my Model 3's hubcaps. And so it's my hunch that you're not gonna have a problem on the Model Y like I did, but if you have a problem with yours, please let me know in the comments. And also, if you have the ability to make a model, to repair your Model Y, please leave a link to that in the comments as well, and I'll be sure to either pin that comment or add a link to your model from the description. Uh, if you have a Model Y and you don't have that ability, check the description to see if somebody's already modeled this for you. On the 2024 Model 3, we can see that they've done away with the aluminum center cap, and now it's just molded right into the hubcap. And on the back side, we can see that they do still have the original four tab design and the spring can just pop out just like before. And these tabs, they're quite a bit different in how they're designed. I don't know if these are going to be stronger or weaker than what I have now, but I figured we would just donate this one to science and we'll see if we can break this off. Yeah. So these do just break off. So I imagine the 2024 refresh will have the same issue over time. These will probably break off. But because we don't have an aluminum center cap here, I don't know how we're gonna hide a screw to secure any 3D printed repair kit that we put on the back here. And like I mentioned earlier, you could probably just use some glue. And so if you do end up 3D printing a repair kit, please let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to link to it in the description so that we can help out the next guy. And finally, I thought we would talk about the original aero cover. This is from a 2017 to 2020 Model 3. You can see on the back, uh, it has the same design as the 2021 to 2023. And so if I just pop out this spring, we'll see if these are more or less durable than, than what was on my car. And so you can see here, these do actually have like a rib on the inside of all of these that's going to make these a little bit stronger. And if I try to break one, 
these do not seem to want to break. So again, I think that these are made out of a little bit softer and more durable material than the 2021 to 2023 ones. Uh, and I don't think you're going to have an issue on these either. In terms of compatibility, this hubcap from 2017 to 2020 Model 3s will fit a 2021 to 2023 Model 3 and vice versa. And so if you can find this older style of Model 3 and you're okay with the older appearance, I think this is actually a better made and more durable aero cover. You might get some more life out of this if you want to replace your aero covers with this older style. But neither the 2024 Model 3 or the Model Y hubcap will fit this older style of Model 3 because they have a different number of spokes and a different system inside of here. Now I am super stoked with how this turned out. We've made a drastic improvement. These things don't rattle at all anymore. And just with a 3D printed part and a little bit of effort, we've made these aero covers stronger than brand new ones and they're repairable, which is just amazing. And the neat part is since these are 3D printed, if you have a 3D printer, you can have this on your car today, depending on what time you watch this video. So in the description of the video, I've put a link to the model so that you can download this and print your own. If you don't have a 3D printer, what are we waiting for? I mean, come on, you have to get one of these things. They're so cool. Anything that's in your mind, you can just dream up, print it out, have it in your hand within an hour or two. And it's just really amazing how much stuff we can keep out of the landfill and not have to buy over and over again. I've also put a link in the description to where you can buy one of these. I've put together a little repair kit. If you do end up doing this repair, I would love to know about it. So please let me know in the comments. And of course, if you have any questions, you can let me know there too. So I hope you found this helpful.